I decided to talk about Mod Mom and my wife. And, uh, and so, but I didn't record it, and so I wanted to record it. So that's, that's the main reason. But also to show that, hey, this public speaking gig, it is something that can go on. The teachers don't have to do it, it's not like a boss or anything like that. Um, but also, just remember that I, I'm the kind of person who volunteers for this time. So that's kind of important. Cool. Yeah. All right, thank you. you the best for um, giving me a few minutes. So do they get emotional? Just do you know. Okay, are you ready? Thanks, Tina. That's a Mari Fano. It's really exciting to get ready to give a devotion this week, the day after Mother's Day, because I get to say, on behalf of us, all of us in the room who aren't moms, to those who are, happy Mother's Day. You guys are all amazing educators and homemakers and inspirers and dreamers and organizers and jokesters. And I hope you got spoiled all weekend and that you didn't have to do too much of the planning for yourself, like the mums in the English department. I can't speak on Mother's Day without telling you a little bit about the most important mothers in my life. My mum was my first teacher. She was a kindergarten or a new entrant teacher at St. Mary's School in Mount Forest, Ontario. And when I was at school, I had to call her Mrs. Jeffrey. I couldn't call her Mum, Mummy, Mummy Dearest, any of those other pet names. She was Mrs. Jeffrey at school. And all of my classmates remember her as the best teacher at the school. I think probably because it's really true that the most important things we learn in life are from kindergarten. How to use scissors without cutting yourself. How to share, how to be nice to others. And my mum, was the best at teaching all those skills. My mom is to this day a keen environmentalist. She always sorts the recycling really well. She picks up litter for all the other people who are less tidy than her. She's a tireless walker. She'll walk laps around the hometown, leaving my dad in the dust. She's got the best children's book library that she shares with my kids and any other nieces and nephews and grandkids and people around the place who need books. And she knows songs for kids to sing forever. She rarely gets grumpy with, with me or my brother and sister for doing things that were good for us, like reading on the couch all the way through dinner. Okay, maybe she did get a bit grumpy with us, or at least me, for reading through dinner. And she always encouraged us in everything we did, even if that meant moving to the far side of the world to marry a cute Kiwi girl. Now my kids call her Gran, and they love getting cards from her in the mail. She's one of the letter writers and card senders who keeps Canada Post and New Zealand Post in business almost single-handedly. And her notes and her letters share love and friendship and aroha with people all over the world, especially her grandkids down here in New Zealand. She's like the proverb in the Bible that says, strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. I think that's one of the best lessons she ever taught me when I was her student in kindergarten. It's also a lesson that applies to another mum in my life, which is my wife, Bex, my fire eco, my hoarangatira, my best friend, the mother of my three amazing sons. She wanted to have kids close together so that she could leave her role as a high school teacher and a dean and spend time at home with our children. And she's taken on more teaching than anyone I know. She runs a leadership team at her play center. She helps kids lessons at Kindy, teaching archaeology. She teaches Sunday school at church. And everywhere she goes, youngsters look at her with joy and passion for their little. All the kids she works with gather around her like she's their hero, laughing and chatting and talking and playing and having fun. She's also someone who laughs at the time to come. But what I love most about my mom and my wife is that they know their kids really well. They know how to learn, and they know how we learn, they know how to speak to them at all the stages in life. They know just to be there. And that's what I love about the mums here at St. Kent's and in our community as well. So many of the mums that I've met here at St. Kentigan's at parents' evenings, football, through the classroom, all the mums in our community are so in tune with the learning of their children, and it's incredible. I'm amazed at how well they know their children, and it's really inspirational how they learn, how they react to adversity, how they respond to change, how they grow. And that's what I think is most important about Mother's Day. 
It's a chance to celebrate the women who nurture us and teach us. There's a famous Fakatoki that my year 10 students put up on the board in our English class after we studied well writing. O te whaia, te tākere, o te waka. Mothers are the hull of the canoe. They sail the family through the ocean of learning and of life. So thank you all of you mothers out there for guiding us on the journey.